In the summer of 1983, the submarine K-429 sank off the coast of Kamchatka. 120 crew members fought for their lives, but not all survived. The court placed the blame on the commander and the mechanic. But was the verdict fair? We will detail this story right now. The second half of the 20th century is known as the Cold War period when the USSR and the USA competed for the status of the leading power. There were no open armed clashes between the states, they merely intimidated each other with the quantity and power of their weapons. Submarines played an important role in this confrontation. The nuclear submarine K-429 was built according to Project 670 SCAT and launched in 1972. It belonged to the second generation of Soviet submarines and featured several improvements, quieter operation, and increased automation. A total of 11 submarines of Project 670 were produced. Their main purpose was to combat enemy aircraft carriers and other large ships. For this, the submarine was equipped with torpedoes and eight underwater launch cruise missiles. In the early years of service, the K-429 experienced at least two emergency incidents, partial flooding of the reactor compartment and hull rupture due to air blowing in one of the ballast tanks. After repairs, the submarine successfully completed combat missions in the North Atlantic and the Mediterranean Sea, then transitioned from the Northern Fleet to the Pacific Fleet, where it joined the 10th Division of the 2nd Submarine Flotilla in Kamchatka. In May 1983, K-429 returned from a six-month autonomous voyage and was docked for repairs but was still on active duty. Suddenly, in June, Unplanned exercises were announced, approved by the Chief of Staff of the Flotilla, Oleg Yurifayev. The commander of the 10th Division, Nikolai Alteyev, summoned Captain First Rank Nikolai Suvorov and tasked him with taking command of the K-429 to go to sea for one day for training torpedo firing. Suvorov objected, as half of his crew was on leave and the submarine was under repair. However, his objections were dismissed and he was threatened with a court-martial. Nikolai Suvorov faced a difficult choice he was already preparing to move to St. Petersburg for a teaching position in officer classes. Refusing to comply with the order could mean problems with the move and service, which would affect his family's well-being. Suvorov was forced to agree. They began to gather the missing sailors for the training. The crew was formed from five different crews in less than a day and assigned to battle stations a few hours before going to sea. There were 120 people on board, more than half of whom Commander Nikolai Suvorov saw for the first time and did not know their training level. In this rush, a warrant officer who had never managed a battle post in such a composition was placed at the control panel for the diving and surfacing system. In such haste, the submarine had no right to go to sea, according to the combat training course. But under pressure from the command, it did. On the evening of June 24th, 1983, the submarine went to sea. Before heading to the exercise area with depths of up to 2,000 meters, the commander decided to enter Saranaya Bay and conduct a standard balancing procedure at a depth of 40 meters to equalize the boat's trim and list by filling the ballast tanks with water. Closer to half past 11 at night, the submarine began to submerge, but the commander did not know this, the depth gauges showed no change. More water was taken in, depth zero. At some point, the submarine jolted slightly. The submariners realized they were on the bottom. The depth gauge in the central post was not working. At the same time, there was a report of water ingress in the fourth compartment. The crew sealed the bulkheads and started to deal with the problem. A powerful stream of water was entering through the ventilation system via two 40 centimeter pipes. Despite all attempts to manually close the ventilation shaft gates, it was unsuccessful. The water filled the entire compartment in less than three minutes. Fourteen people died at their battle stations. Soon the fifth reactor compartment was also flooded, but luckily the people had left and the reactor was shut down. The water barrier divided the submarine into two parts. 83 people, including the commander, remained in the bow, 23 people in the stern. The attempt to blow out the ballast tanks to make the ship float up was unsuccessful. The air just escaped overboard. The lights went out, and it became clear that the submarine itself could not rise from the bottom. The emergency lighting came on and silence fell. While the sailors decided what to do, a battery exploded in the third compartment due to water contact, filling the room with acrid smoke. 
everyone there moved to the second compartment. Over time, new problems arose. It turned out that the emergency rescue equipment was faulty. Two emergency buoys, which could indicate the location of the accident, did not surface. The emergency escape device was also defective. The sailors hoped help would come quickly according to the last report. The K-429 was diving for only an hour. But reality was harsh, no one was searching for the submarine. The next morning, eight hours after the accident, the commander sent two submariners for help warrant officers Nikolai Merzlikin and Mikhail Lesnik. In special gear, they went through the torpedo tube and surfaced. There was no one around. They swam in cold water for about three hours before a military ship noticed them. The submariners were taken aboard and initially mistaken for foreign saboteurs but later identified. They had notes from the commander with the submarine's coordinates and crew problems. This triggered the emergency alarm and the start of the rescue operation. Soon help arrived at the accident site. A special hydrophone capable of transmitting sound was lowered into the water for communication. The submariners answered questions by hitting the hull with a sledgehammer. The rescue bell could not dock with the rescue hatches due to the submarine's tilt. It was decided to release the sailors from the bow compartments four at a time through the torpedo tube. They began checking the diving gear, but there wasn't enough for everyone. Many oxygen tanks had less than the required amount. Additional sets had to be requested from the surface, which were delivered by divers. On the second day, batteries exploded in the first compartment. There were no casualties, but breathing became more difficult. Finally, the exit began. The sailors crawled into the narrow torpedo tube, waited for it to fill with water, then exited and surfaced where rescuers met them. In the stern, torpedo tubes were absent and the exit was only possible through the emergency hatch in the seventh compartment. Only one warrant officer, Vasily Bayev, a former diving instructor, knew how to use it. He helped 22 sailors to the surface, saving their lives. Bayev exited last and managed to leave the seventh compartment unflooded which facilitated the submarine's recovery. For his heroic actions, Vasily Beyev was promoted and awarded the Order of the Red Star. Not everyone was lucky during the ascent. One sailor died in the torpedo tube while preparing to exit, another while surfacing. To lift the K-429, a pontoon vessel was brought to the bay. It took 45 days to raise the submarine. On September 5, 1983, it was delivered to Vilyuchinsk, placed in a dry dock, and inspected. The submarine was repaired and re-entered the Soviet Navy in 1985. An investigation began immediately after the accident. Submarine Commander Nikolai Suvorov and Senior Assistant Alexei Stepanenko tried to prove their innocence they were forced to comply with the order from the command and go to sea on a faulty ship with an inadequately prepared crew. However, the investigators charged them under Article 213b of the RSFSR criminal code violation of navigation rules, resulting in the sinking of the ship and human casualties Suvorov and Stepanenko were found guilty and sentenced to 10 and 8 years in prison, respectively. After the submarine crew sent a letter asking for leniency, the terms were reduced to 6 and 4 years, and soon they were released under amnesty. The K-429 accident revealed systemic problems related to the organization of the preparation and operation of submarines, during the emergency exit, many shortcomings and deficiencies were discovered. The ship's commander and senior assistant were effectively held responsible for all violations. Ultimately, the death of 16 people resulted not only from technical faults but also from inadequate crew training and pressure from the command. <laughs>